So remember that uh, from the previous class that we had, we managed to work with our question number one on the same exercise. Given that O is the center of the circle in each part, so we are asked to calculate each of these lettered angles that we are seeing here and also to give reasons for that. All right, so if we are to consider our diagram properly, we are going to see that uh, we are given a center as O, so this point that we are seeing O is the center. And uh, I say that from our theorems, remember that if a line is drawn from the center, passing through the chord, this line is actually going to bisect this chord and not just only to bisect, it is going to be at 90 degrees uh, with the chord. So that's why we are seeing the 90 degrees on this side and also the 90 degrees is gonna be on the other side, remembering that angles on a straight line, that's 180 degrees. So it means that angle A is simply 90 degrees. So the reason is uh, the line that we draw from the center to the chord bisects this chord at 90 degrees. It is bisected at 90 degrees. All right, considering also this same diagram, we are going to see that from O to M, that's a radius. From O to N, we are given also a radius and we know that these two are equal. Uh, from O to M, it is equal uh, from O to N. So what does it mean? It means the angle that we have at M and the angle that we are having at N will be equal. So automatically this B is equal to 32 degrees. Uh, that is uh, what we are having. Remember that the angles that are opposite equal sides, if we are given this situation, whereby these two sides are the same, these angles automatically are the same. They are opposite these sides, which are equal. So these two angles, they are equal in value. So that means angle B and 32 are the same. All right, so this is our angle B, uh, which is uh, 32 degrees here. All right, so considering uh, these 32, we are going to see that also the line that we are having RT, it is a line bisector, this one. A line bisector means that it divides everything. That is why you see this angle is divided into two equal parts. It also follows the angle at O is going to be divided again into two equal parts. And also the angle that is created at R, this one, is also going to be divided into two equal parts. So what does it mean? It means angle D and C are the same. So angle C is equal to angle D. And knowing that angles in a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. We are going to subtract uh, these two angles that we have calculated, uh, the one that we are given, M at 32 degrees, and the B also of 32 degrees. So if you subtract these angles, don't forget to divide by two, because we say these two angles are equal. So if they're equal, uh, that means we are supposed to divide by two. So that means we've got 180 minus uh, 64 degrees uh, divide by two. All right, so that is, we have to subtract there. 180 minus 64, and that is uh, going to be 116 uh, degrees. All right, then divide this one by two. We are going to obtain an angle of uh, 58. So meaning to say angle C is 58, angle D is also 58. So the angle that we are seeing here at C is uh, 58 degrees. At D, this is also uh, 58 degrees. All right, another way that we could have calculated the same angles C and D is that they are equal as we can see, but remember that we say this angle is 90. We have got a 90 degrees here. We have got a 32 degrees, and we know that angles in a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. So that means you can consider working with, uh, maybe work with triangle O, uh, and T, all right, it follows that this triangle O and T, all right, if you are using triangle O, T, N, or O, N, T, we are going to have our angle D is going to be 180 degrees minus these two angles. Remember, this is 90 degrees here at our, at our T. So we've got 90 degrees and the 32 degrees that we have on this one. So this will give us angle D, but remember that angle D and uh, C, they are the same. So 90 plus uh, 32, 
that is going to be 122 uh, degrees. So if we subtract this from 180, that was going to give us uh, 58, uh, 58 degrees. So that is the idea there. So angle D is 58 and angle C is also 58. This, the reason if you are using this one, the reason is angles in a triangle, they add up to 180, which is the same thing as you can see, these are congruent triangles. They are the same. What we have on this triangle is the same as what we have on this triangle. So that means angle C and D is the same. All right, let's consider F and E. How are we going to determine the angle F and the angle E? Remember I said angle F and E, they are also the same. All right, so this angle, in this angle, they are equal. So angle E is equal to angle F. But how are we going to determine that? Uh, remember that the angle that is at the center, if you're given this condition, that's our center there, and we've got uh, the circumference, uh, the angle that is created at the circumference. So it follows that this angle is twice the angle at the circumference. Remember, if this is X, this is 2X. So what does it mean? It means that if we were to combine the whole of this angle C and D together, if you add this angle uh, C and D, you combine this angle, that is 58 uh, multiplied by two or 58 plus 58, that is gonna give us 116. This whole angle, this one, uh, is going to be 116, meaning to say I'm talking about angle M or to N. So if you consider from M to O to N, the wall of this angle that is there, it is simply uh, 58 degrees times two, that is 58 plus 58, uh, and that is going to give us 116 degrees. All right, this is the angle at the center, this one that I'm indicating at this point, the 116 degrees, this one. As we need this one, which is where F and R and E are found. So meaning to say angle M from M to R to N, back to N there. We are talking about M, R, N. This is the angle at the circumference, this one, which is the X. Remember this was two X, this is X. So the angle at the circumference, the wall of this angle, it's a half of this angle that we are seeing. So it's 116 degrees divided by two. So as you can see, we are back again to the 58 degrees. So this angle is 58 degrees. The wall of this angle that we are seeing there is 58. So the question is, if this angle MRN, the wall of this angle is 58, what about F and E? Because we say they are equal. They are being bisected from this concept. Uh, it was bisected uh, by the line RT. So what does it mean? It means angle E and F, we are going to divide this by two. 58 degrees uh, divided by two. That is what we are going to have at the end. And uh, if we divide this by two, that is gonna give us 29 degrees. So meaning to say there, we are having 29. So angle E is going to be 29 degrees. Angle F is also going to be 29 degrees. All right. So now we are left with, uh, if you are to consider, we can find these two angles here. Uh, they are clear, this angle J, this one, and the angle I, they are also equal, uh, considering angles on a straight line, all right? So these are angles on a straight line. So angle I is equal to angle J, which is simply 180 degrees minus 58 angles on a straight line. There is a 58 degrees, which is the same as this side. So you just subtract uh, 58 degrees from 180 degrees. That the difference that we are having there is going to give us uh, the angle I or the angle, which is a J. So that it was going to be 122 degrees. So meaning to say this angle that we are seeing inside is 122 degrees at J. And also the angle at I is 120 two degrees. All right. With this, we can calculate the remaining angles. And what are the remaining angles we are referring to angle H and this angle G. So angle H uh, and G, these two angles also, they are the same. The angle that we are having here, H and this angle G, they are also equal. 
So angle H and G will be equal. So depending with what you want, because as you can see, this is 29, this is 122, this is 29, this is 122. So these triangles are the same. So the way that you calculate your G is the same way that you calculate your H using the concept that angles in a triangle, they add up to 180. So we are going to subtract uh, the 29 and the 122, depending with which part are you going to use this side or you are using this side. So inside the triangle, there's a 29 degrees. There's also 122 degrees. So these are the two angles that we're going to uh, subtract from 180 degrees in order for us to obtain the angle H or the angle G. Like I said before, that these two angles are the same. So we are simply going to add the two. Uh, that is going to be 151 degrees if we add these two and subtracting this from 180 degrees, we are going to obtain uh, 29 degrees. So that's the angle G is 29 degrees, which is also the same as this angle 29 degrees. So another way that we could have just determined these angles G and H without uh, these calculations, it was to consider that. Let us consider our diagram this way. I want you to see something here. Uh, if you consider this part, you are going to see that from point O to R, this one, and from point O to N, that's a radius. So you're dealing O R is a radius, O N is also a radius. So remember that they are the same, they are equal. So angles opposite equal sides are also equal. So it follows that this 29 degrees, which is opposite to this side, must be the same. This side is opposite to this angle G. So angle E is supposed to be equal to angle G, which is 29 degrees. But remember, I said before, angle G is equal to angle H. So therefore, angle H is also 29 degrees. We can also use the same concept. There are so many ways to answer these typical questions. All you need are the theorems. So all the reasons that are being given there, I was explaining them. You do not explain these. You have to write them down. So everything that I was explaining, you are supposed to write it down as a reason. That is what we are supposed to have attempted our question. So more of these questions to come from Maison African Motives. Make sure that you do the right thing. Subscribe to this channel for more classes.